two adapter okay and apart from that what we'll be seeing today is how we use the cloud connector how do we connect to it how do we maintain that connectivity and everything how to pass the password to the service and these things okay so let's go with the soap first okay. so again soap is majorly used to uh, connect with your soap based web services a soap can be at your sender side or your receiver side okay. so for example if you want to give out create a soap web service and give it out to other people we would be using a sender adapter and if you want to trigger somebody else's soap service or give somebody else's soap service we'll be using a receiver adapter okay let's say we want to create something with soap it gives us two options uh, one is soap rm one is uh, soap 1.x okay now rm would be used for asynchronous messaging that is no response and one x will be used for synchronous messaging that is a response so let's see the parameters for rm first okay uh, if you see here direction sender adapter type soap transport protocol is https because Uh, it's all over the web and then under the connection setting here uh, we have the same uh, kind of address field here so whatever you give here so slash will be part of your url that you need to provide to your sender system uh, then there's something called as url to visible okay now this comes into picture when you have a visible with you when you have a visible Uh, build with you okay in that case what you can do is you can upload a visible here okay and this uh, path should be automatically populated okay. then under authorization we have the same uh, user role and messaging send so i believe tai no, you had a doubt question. with this sorry uh, this url to visible if we do not have the file then it's fine okay It's just an additional step to define the structure. Uh, yeah. Kind of yes. Okay. I'll come to this URL to visible and there's one more in the receiver side after everything is done. Oh. Okay. So for now, this is something that will be picked up from your visible side. Okay. Uh, authorization. Say you had a doubt in this, correct? Client certificate and user role. Something related to this. Ah. Uh. uh as mine yes uh so when you're trying to connect to some web service that is your http based web service here you have to use your own authorization yeah yes here uh when you select client certificate here so you are selecting here in the receiver you mean No, I am selecting in the sender only, but I upload the certificates also. But it, it, the uh, the the no is getting any result. But I change it to user, then it is getting the result. It doesn't work that way. Okay. So the certificate that you imported in CPI for your NY time service was different. That was just your connectivity certificate. When you select client certificate, this has a different mechanism of authentication here in the receiver itself. So CPI yeah. system will be authenticating against that. Uh, uh and what time here okay one thing is this okay ma'am apart from but in that, the in the direct... receiver side it worked hello you use certificate based authentication in receiver ah uh, i used in that scenario that in the receiver side and it worked whereas i am change that user role to certificate in the sender side it does not getting it getting an error it Yes, it doesn't work. The reason being here, the third-party system has to authenticate against CPI. So when you are sending your data through Postman, you are basically a third-party system. You are not sending any certificate to CPI. Correct. That is why this was failing here. When you select it as client certificate, you are using your basic credential, right? Username and password. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is why. If you select client certificate, then 
things change then you have to create key pair upload that pair here uh, send that key from your postman and everything that that, that is totally different thing okay man that is why it wasn't working here in the sender user role will be your basic username and password okay and in the receiver it might have worked because you sent the api key don't send the api key once and try to do it with certificate it will fail okay man uh yes moving on uh, under the conditions we have the same here again uh, the maximum body size and attachment size from here okay this was for asynchronous now if we go for the synchronous one that is 1.8 Well, technically, it's a both of them, but under the connection here, you have to give your address. Plus, your your web services. Okay. Here again, service definition is either manual or using digital. So, if you have that digital available to you, you can upload it here. Okay, but if you select manual, it will simply uh, not refer to that result. So if you have already received a result which you are doing using, then you can upload that result here, and this will automatically populate these values: URL to result, what is the service, what is the endpoint, and everything. Then again, web service address addressing. Uh, if you select this, it internally changes its. Uh, addressing protocol uh, i've never used this till yet okay then message exchange pattern this is where you define if it is going to be a request reply or one way okay so if you select request reply it will become a synchronous service okay and if you select one way it becomes a synchronous service only request uh, but if you do an asynchronous uh, service here what will happen is if you select robust In this case, the error will be sent back to your uh, the sender. Just the error, no no response, just the error. And if you select web uh, web service standard, then nothing will be sent back. It will be simply your asking for service. Okay, but uh, a general convention is if you want to make it asynchronous, go for uh, SOAP RM. And if you want to make it a synchronous, uh, synchronous, then use this 1.x and request reply. Then again, uh, here under conditions we have the body size and attachment size. Under web service security, here uh, if you do this via my via manual configuration in channel, you can sign and encrypt your data here. Here you have different options. Verify the message and sign the response, or verify and decrypt the message and sign and encrypt the response. Because since this is synchronous in nature, you will have to decrypt the message and send the response after signing. So for that, we have the same settings here that we have in our encrypted and decrypted. So your public key, your private, <laughs> your public keys, your private keys, algorithms. Sign in order. Okay. Usually, again, this is also not usually required. Uh, again, okay. Coming back to this part, the visual part. Okay. So, if we have visual, let's say uh, at the back end, you are connecting to a, a web service in a web, a SOAP web service in a web. Okay. And in the request itself, you want to maintain that structure here as well. Okay, so what happens is if you add this visual visual here, it will allow only that type of the data to be coming in in the request. Like if I send any other data for now, it will accept it if it's inside the SOAP header, a SOAP SOAP header and open body SOAP structure. Okay, but if I add the visual here, then it will. Uh, Always verify that structure or verify the input payload with that vessel. Getting my point? Can you repeat it once more? Okay. 
if you don't give a visible here manual okay uh, then you can send almost anything uh, from your sender system okay as long as it is in the soap format the general soap header soap envelope and soap body or the soap envelope header and body but as soon as you select here as visible you provide that visible then the request should come in the same format as the visible request so visible has three parts right a request response and error correct so it will it will have to follow that structure follow that specific structure So if you see this, I have populated one visual here, okay? then it will always take that same visual structure in the request as well okay and now if we move to the receiver whenever you want to trigger someone's already existing soap web services again you have the same thing here either so far m or 1.x okay so i'll just go to 1.x under the connectivity parameters here here should come uh, your address service endpoint so always your url uh, your whenever you are given a visit or so for web service will also be given an address like this right so in that case you have to put your address here again proxy type is on the internet or on premise so if it is on premise your system is on premise you have to select on premise here okay. in that case something like location id will pop up we'll see this today right keep it on internet then url to visible again we have the same thing i can upload the same thing see my url is in uh, technically the visible is not very correct so otherwise what would happen what would have happened is as soon as i select this i should have gotten a request response and everything structure which service i want to trigger okay what operation i want to trigger because one visible can contain multiple operations in that case uh, all of this data would have been populated automatically using a tool then authentication could be basic non and client certificate but uh, when you select this as on premise here you are only allowed basic and principal propagation so only basic authentication is allowed when you are connecting to an on premise system using cloud connector cloud connector will not support your certificate based authentication you give your credential name uh, then again you have the standard parameters uh, here that is what is the time of we want to compress the message like reduce it in size allow chunking and return http response code as a header or clean up request headers and everything under security again you have the same policies as this one signing and scripting and based on policies in visual so if there are encrypting policies in visual they can be used here but 
but again uh, this is never really required okay so calling a soap web service is as simple as uh, calling our uh, https web service you just have to have the visual the data in its visual format so for that what you should do is uh, whenever you are trying to trigger some web service you should always ask for a visual okay and just before sending the data back you should have a message mapping where you are converting that data into your visual data visual format whatever your request or reply formats are you are converting that into your uh visual formats okay clear yes ma'am okay and i show you a thing you got it and see this is for the sender part so you have this soap web service created here so when you have created it this is the url that you need to give to your sender system and if you have defined the visual here you can see the visual and download from here visual and visual without policy Yes. We should move on to the next one. 